Ano ba yung suot mo, ganun? Hindi mo ako niya ganyan. Ba't ka naka-skirt bakla ka ba? Masamang tao. Ha? Bak- bakit ka transmask ng binary? Bakit ka hizi na dadamit ka naman, pinapakita mo naman yung dede mo or something like that? Ganon! My story. This is our story. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm Pot Pot. I'm Seance. And we are Gen Z Emos. Historically speaking, I mean, when you talk about the goth subculture, it's uh, most prominent in the 80s with bands like uh, The Cure, um, you know, those kinds, Su- Suzy Su and the Banshees and those kinds. So goth culture, um, goth subculture back then and now, I feel like a lot of the elements of the culture back then and now are still pretty much the same in the sense that it mostly revolves around music. So I feel like the emo subculture here in uh, the Philippines uh, comprises a lot of people who are our age and also millennials. And uh, contrary to popular belief, there are still a lot of us, but I guess it wouldn't fit the Western standard, but we do exist. Bata pa lang kasi ako, parang gusto ko na nung mga parang black clothes. Like, lahat po talaga ng clothes ko black as in, uh, madalas din yung walang design or minimal na design lang. Ayun po, mga grade, ano siguro, grade 7 or mga 11 years old ako. I started dressing like this when I was actually like 13. So I was in like around 8th grade. Dati pa kasi naglo-look up na ako sa mga kung paano manamit yung mga emo, pero... Like, hindi ako marunong ganun. Tapos, yung nag-start yung, ano, like, nagka-relationship kami. Tapos, nakikita ko na ganun siya. Tapos, na, naangasan ako ganun. So, tapos, yun, nagpapaturo ako sa kanya. So, nursing student po ako. So, lagi akong naka-white. Lagi po akong nagbabao ng damit sa school. Pamalit, kulay black. <laughs> Kasi ayoko po ng kulay white. Ayun po. Pupunta kami sa OR, naka-scrub suit po kami, tapos naka-clogs, uh, ganun. Tapos yun po, pag uwi, dadaan po muna ako ng school kasi malapit lang po yung school sa hospital. So, um, dala ko po yung black ko na damit, ganun, parang pambahay na black. Tapos, yun po, magpapalit po ako kasi ayoko kung makita sarili ko na naka-white. Naiinis po kasi ako. I remember when I was younger and I would... Uh... I wouldn't have any black clothes because my relatives would always say, "Ang tanda mo ting nun or something." So then, like, uh, I was super scared and apprehensive at first about uh, incorporating black clothes into my wardrobe. But the more I did, the more I felt at home within myself. And I guess you could say it's also like for teenage angst reasons. But um, I guess it also felt. Like, as cheesy as it sounds, because I'm a literature major, so... <laughs> I feel like, in a way, it also reflects the chaos of being a teenager. First, they were kind of scared. Na parang, hello, like, ano yun? Like, nag-worship ka ba ng demonyo or something? Parang, at first, natatakot sila. Pero nung tuma- tuma- habang tumatagal, they kind of just realized now oh, it's also just a part of my style. And... Uh, the longer I kept dressing this way, they were like, oh, okay, that's just the way Seance really um, wants to express himself. So, ayun. Like, I guess, in a way now, they, they, after a while, they started buying me uh, clothes with skulls on it. And so, like, I guess they're kind of supportive, the man, but I guess they wanted to just make sure that I wasn't worshipping the devil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, super supportive ng, ano, ng mom ko. Uh, except sa piercings. <laughs> ayun. <laughs> Same. So, ayun, so, di ba, super supportive niya. Like, kung anong, basta bigla lang akong manamit, tapos may kita niya, parang magulit na lang siya. Oh, ganyan, ganyan, tarang. Pero, hindi niya ako dinidiscourage na, na parang, ano ba yan? Ano naman yung saot mo? Ganun. So, okay lang sa kanya na, na ganito ako. <laughs> 
Uh, hindi po na to eh, kasi nasa mall kami nun. Kasi pag uh, septum piercing, so pwede po siyang itago, i-flip lang. So, asa mall kami, tapos nakita ng nanay ko, sabi niya, Ali, ano yan, may kulangot ka. Tapos, sabi ko, <laughs> sabi ko, ah, hindi ah, ano lang yan, wala yan, ganyan. Tapos, ayun po, sabi niya, patingin, patingin, ba't kumikintab, ganun. Tapos, binaba ako po, tapos yun, pinapagalitan ako sa mall. Kaya, ayun, pinatanggal niya. Pero pinabalik niya rin kasi na-realize niya, ang ganda daw sa akin. <laughs> uh, yung mom ko kasi walang pake siya. Wala, siya. wala siyang pake na. <laughs> wala siyang pake kung anong suotin ko. This vest was given to be to me by my mom. Like, Years ago, ito galing to sa ukay, tas ginupit ko lang. It's also my mom's from like the early 2000s. So ito like sa Shopee lang. <laughs> so I guess it really just, it's a blend of finding stuff from the thrift. Kasi I think one of the nicest things about it is that it not only helped me in my journey, in my sexuality, but also my gender. So... I found a lot of things through that subculture that uh, I couldn't really understand. So that's why, that's how I also came to be a, a more prominent member of the queer community. That's why, I, that's actually how, I, in a weird way, <laughs> of a pipeline of getting into the emo subculture, that's how I found out that I'm pansexual. That's also how I found out that I'm transmasculine on binary. So. Yeah, it, it started with music in the eighth grade. Yeah. Um, bi po ako. Um, androgynous rin po ako. So, um, gender fluid po ganun ako. So, parang, minsan po, uh, gusto ko, parang, ayun, babae ako. Minsan, gusto ko lalaki ako. So, depende rin po yun sa pananamit ko. Sometimes, honestly, it's just not worth the energy of explaining. Like, I... Honestly, like, if it's someone I'll never see again, then why would I invest a lot of time in, like, trying to justify my identity? But then if it's someone who I really feel, uh, where I really feel invested in, like, they mean something to me, or, like, I feel like um, they're gonna be in my life for longer, I really feel the need to, like, let them know. It's very intimidating, actually, even for people within the community who don't identify as um, a who identify as cis. So if you're cisgender and you're part of the queer community and you never really felt the need or like called to look into um, the terms and you don't really know anyone who's like, who doesn't identify as cisgender, then it is really overwhelming. Uh, the topic of like neo-pronouns, for example, like, like Z, 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 like, like mga ganyan. A lot of people say, I'm not gonna use that because it's so complicated. But not like honestly, it's not that hard. Like if you really get to know the person, tapos like you really genuinely ask them, it comes from a place of genuine like um, curiosity and respect. It's really not that hard. I guess it just comes from a place of like you try to understand even though you don't relate to it, just for the sake of being a decent person. So even if I guess if you want to talk about it like for for straight people or for cisgendered people, you can just say, you may not understand it, but uh, the bottom line is that these people exist, like we exist. Sometimes there are people who respect it but don't really bother to research. For example, for me, I'm a femme-presenting transmasculine person, so I get misgendered a lot. Sometimes, does it make me feel dysphoric? Yes. There are a lot of things that people need to um, assume less. That's where gender-neutral terms are kind of like really important. Honestly, they don't know. Oh, <laughs> they don't know. How old are you? Hindi po alam. Ah, hindi hindi nila alam na bay she. Parang hindi naman nila natanong. Hindi siya harsh kasi hindi naman siya offensive pero merong nagsabi ko nyan na ako nyan ba't ka na skirt bakla ka ba ganon tas parang Hindi, hindi naman siya na, hindi naman siya na offend kasi hindi naman na offend yung bakla na ano eh. The harshest words I've ever heard were already like no one can say anything to me because the harshest words I've ever heard are from my own brain. I have a classmate, I have a classmate who keeps dead naming me. And like at first, akala ko ignorante lang siya. So like, 
pinabayaan ko lang. Tapos, he keeps taunting me. He passes by me sa canteen. Tapos sinabi niya, Hello, blank. Tapos parang, hindi naman siya nag sa akin usually. So, weird. Tapos biglang, the week after that, sinusulat na yung pangalan ko sa blackboard. Eh, hindi ko naman ginag... It's weird. Tapos tinanong ko yung prof ko, Ma'am, bak- bakit po sinulat ni... Yung, pangal- yung pangalan ko sa board. Sabi niya, I don't know. And then I told her, Ma'am, everyone kasi in my block, they already know by now na I don't use my dead name anymore. Sabi niya, ah, okay. Like, she was like really supportive. So do I call you Seyans? I was like, yes po, ma'am. Kasi Ateneo is uh, very supportive when it comes to like uh, gender policies and things. Yeah, gender expression. You see a lot of people there wearing like assigned male at birth people, like masked people wearing skirts. Uh, it's normal there to see like a lot of the, the, the queer community. I used to feel so bad na, uh, no one will ever think that because you, you you can't ever pass as a guy because you have boobs. Parang ganun, like people are always like, oh, nang kainis like yung pronouns pronouns na yun. Parang no ba yun like, huh? Bakit, bakit ka trans mask nand binary? Bakit ka hide na dadamit ka naman pinapakita mo naman yung de de mo or something like that? Parang I mean I wouldn't say it's harsh because honestly it's kind of funny. It just the point of being non binary is to not, <laughs> you're not in the binary. So why do I have to perform my gender just for the approval of cishet people? Alam mo yun? Siguro, parang be yourself lang. Basta wala kang tinatapakan tao. Ayun lang yung pinaka-importante. Kung saan po talaga pinaka-sasaya ka, yun lang po talaga yung gawin mo. Tsaka hanggang... Ayun po, hanggang mabuti ka, like, wala kang ginagawang masama. Uh, gawin, gawin nyo lang yung gusto nyong gawin sa buhay nyo. Kung ano yung gusto nyong gawin, gawin nyo na agad ngayon. Kasi hindi nyo alam mangyayari bukas. <laughs> so, so, kada, like, seconds, minutes ng buhay nyo, um, importante. So, ayun. Gawin nyo na lahat ng gusto nyo, as in lahat. Bilin mo na yan yung cart mo. Lahat yan. <laughs> <laughs> Ito na yung sign. I guess my advice would just be to um, prioritize your mental health and your safety first above everything else. But um, look for community online. Din. My advice is really to seek out community online, especially now that you know platforms are a thing where you can connect with other people who are probably in the same, same situation. Because I've seen what social media can, like, the bad side of it, and I've also seen the good side of it, where it actually saves people's lives. No matter what you identify as, cisgender or not, or whether you're part of, like, any marginalized community or not, I think that you should be proud of who you are, especially if you're not a bigot, <laughs> if you're not a, a transphobe or a homophobe, be proud of who you are. Also, uh, find ways to express yourself however you want. Find joy in what you put on your body, whether it be body modifications, uh, fashion, whatever makes you happy, as long as it doesn't really like, you know, harm other people. I feel like people underestimate the power of self-expression and, and aesthetics. Because people think that, ay, si, damit lang naman yun, tatanggalin ng, uh, you know. But at the end of the day, if it makes you feel good, if it empowers you to be the person that you feel like you are on the inside, then why not? Uh, hi, I'm Seance. Uh, my pronouns are he, they. I'm a musician. Uh, hello, I'm Pot Pot. Uh, I'm an engineering student. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm 20. And this, this is our story. story.